That's why Ibn al-Qayyim used to say, look at your best friends. Look at your five best friends because they are going to make the first line of your funeral prayer. I've been to funeral prayers of gangsters. People out on the streets doing madness. And when their friends come to the prayer, they come and they say, brother, I don't even know how to make wudu before I pray for my friend. What kind of friends are they? They don't even know how to pray the janazah prayer, let alone how to do wudu. That's who your friends are. I'm thinking, people, what's wrong with you? What is wrong? What lie? Do you not understand that you're playing with Allah right now? Same way you come and you tell a young brother or a young sister you're doing something wrong. They say, get out of my face. You think I don't know? Only God can judge me. You find tranquility in that? You find peace in that? That only God can judge you? You think Allah's going to judge you okay? When you stand before Allah, if he opens that book on you, that book of deeds, what's going to happen on that day? Forget us judging you. Judge yourself before you die. So please, you have to take this very seriously. Because death is not a joke. Death is something that's been promised to every one of us. All of us have been promised death. And Allah said, I'm yet to be challenged. Meaning, who is going to outlive death? The age of death. It came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It took the Prophet's soul. You think you're going to be safe? What would it take you to wake up? When the angels, they come to put out your soul. And they slap you in your face. And they strike you in your back. And they rip out your soul. And they say, come out to the punishment of Allah. Is that where you're going to wake up? Or when you get dashed into your grave and the grave it squeezes you, is that when you're going to wake up? Or when the angels, they come into your grave and they pull out a whip, lash you with it one time that your entire grave, it bursts into flames. Is that when you're going to wake up? Or on the day of judgment, when you wake up naked, uncircumcised, barefooted, the sun is above your head, drowning in your sweat, is that when you're going to wake up? Or when Allah, he comes down on the day of judgment and the way that befits his majesty and everyone falls onto their knees and even the prophets are going to be scared. As Ibn Kathir mentioned on the ayah where Allah said, Kullu ummatin jafiyah. Every nation will be on his knees. Even Ibrahim will say, Allah, Allah, I am your friend. Don't forget me. Isa alayhi salam, the messenger of Allah will say, Allah, take my mom. Leave me. Take my mum. Is that where you're going to wake up? Or are you going to wake up when the, when the guardians of the hellfire, they drag you by your face and they throw you in? Is that when you wake up? Or will you wake up today? Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, there's only one thing that destroyed these youth, thinking that they will live tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? No one promised you tomorrow. It's now or never. Today when you leave, I want you to leave a changed man. Today when you leave, leave a changed woman. Does that make sense? Brothers and sisters, I need your attention for just one minute. Our brothers around the world, they need help. Some of them, if they don't get food and water to drink, they are going to die. And then there's others, like those who are back home, who live on the same streets as us. And if they don't get help in terms of spiritual help, they might lose their faith. Now both those whose lives are in danger and whose faith are in danger, they both need to be helped. But I want to explain to you the repercussions of not helping both of them. You see, if you don't help those who are suffering when it comes to starvation, at least when they die, they will die Muslims. And all that they will leave or all that they will lose at the end is their life of this world. But like, if you don't help those brothers and sisters who are struggling in terms of their faith, if they die, then they might actually lose their afterlife and potentially be entered into the hellfire for a period of time, if not eternity. For that reason, it's important that we don't neglect these, these brothers. For that reason, we started up a project called Umrah with Amanda, where we take brothers and sisters from around the world, specifically the UK, specifically London, and we take them with us 
and we set up a program that facilitates for them to change. We also provide them support for when they return and we always select a handful of brothers who can't afford it themselves and this time we have taken on board more people without paying anything than we ever have before and we are in urgent need of their costs being covered so if you would like to help facilitate towards someone's life changing then please go to the link below inshallah ta'ala and donate generously remember if they change their life then you're actually helping them inshallah ta'ala be a part of saving their afterlife and in terms of reward then any good that they do from this point onwards if they change because of your donation and you're sincere then you're going to get all that reward as well so on the day of judgment you get this mountain of good deeds prayers charity fast all this stuff that you've never done but why did it come your way because you facilitated with Allah's permission for someone to make change and then when he changed he or she did all of these things and now that reward is all on your scales on a day of judgment so please brothers and sisters be as generous as you can go to the link below donate like crazy بارك الله فيك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته